Okay, now it's, now it's on. So welcome to all of you who are joining us online and those of you who are here. This is a special service led by our youth this Earth Day, offering their voices, their thoughts on our Earth and our future. So I invite you to be a part of this reflection on how God is calling us to care for God's creation. Good morning. Just a quick word about this reflection before we jump into it. Um, when we were discussing the idea of having a youth-led worship on Earth Day, we decided it would be a uh, a good idea to ask our young folks what their wishes, their concerns, their hopes were for this congregation and the world uh, with respect to creation and the earth. And we got some very beautiful statements, which um, are on, if you open up the back of this bulletin today, you'll see there it says thoughts from our young people for today. Um, so we have two beautiful readers that are going to come up and read during uh, our piece of music, but if you want to have a clearer idea of what they're saying, it's printed right there for you. We'll be doing that within the context of a piece of music by an artist called Aurora, um, who wrote this piece of music called Exhale, Inhale, in response to uh, our current situation, uh, planetary ecological consciousness. Uh, which we've arranged for you today as our musical reflection. So we'll present that for you now. problem with climate change is too many people know about it but won't do anything about it or just continue making it worse. I think that nature is beautiful and I believe that we need to protect it as we are not. Many people are putting money over the environment, particularly large companies, and we keep supporting them just because it's easy even though it is wrong. Climate, cha climate change is a tough subject right now. People have dug us into a deep hole that's going to be hard to get out of because everything we do affects the climate. We want to continue to try and progress society. The climate will become worse. There are some worrying problems that the way we are treating our planet, but I feel I don't have much of a say, so I feel kind of neutral. It's scary how hot the summers get, and we can't go outside. 
I'm concerned about how our world will run out of everything. Future generations won't experience nature like we have because technology will have taken over. We live in an amazing world, but we have to change it to fit our needs instead of working with the earth. We altered the world past generations, have left it a mess for people to clean up in a small time. We live in an amazing world, especially in April, but global warming is really quite frightening. It's scary because we've been brought into this world just to have to try and fix the world before it is too late, and that's not easy. I'm worried we won't grow up in time to have the power to change what our forefathers have done. I am scared my kids won't see some of the cool nature I have seen, like snow and cold winters. Climate change is a real thing that is going on right now. People know it could end the world, but most people don't do anything about it. I'm concerned about the natural damage the war in the Ukraine is causing, as well as the burning of forests and the bombs destroying people's homes and the people having to flee their homes. stood and somehow calm within the madness of the storm with no solution for the scare tasting pollution in the air my dear come near Stand as you are able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please join in singing our view of the stars fosters wonder.
us pray together. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our lesson. August. Please read this psalm responsively. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the dark, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our sermon text for today is from the first epistle to the John, of John chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are, the tr are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite our children to come forward as we sing, He's Got the Whole World. Got him. So who's got this world in their hands? You've got the whole world in, his, in your hands, yeah. But let's give it, Charlie, you got the whole world in your hands, how's that? Carly, I keep calling you Charlie, I am sorry Carly, thank you for correcting me. Who else, who, who do you want to have the whole world in their hands? Oh, <laughs> a little bit of interference, but that's okay, we'll pass that on. Who do you want to have the whole world in your hands, in their hands? Okay, go for it. A little bit more. Up, and you're going to take care of the world in one way or another. We have globes here, and each of you is going to get one to take with you 
to remember that we do, we sing this song of he's got the whole world in his hands. That means God has the whole world in his hands. But our text today is talking about how God loves us so that we do things in truth and action. So we have, Carly has the world in her hands. And even if you don't stick your hands out, you still have the world. You've got the world on your head. How's that? Okay. Every one of us has the world as our responsibility. And that's what we're talking about today. And God created the world and God created us to love and care for the world. So let's say a prayer. I'll give you your globes and you guys can go back along with the snacks and you can go back to your seats. Dear God, thank you for your creation. Help us keep it in, your, in our hands. Amen. Grant, if you, yeah, you got the snacks and. Each of you, you don't want a globe? You want a globe? There you go. Harley, there you go. You want one? Okay, there you go. Give me one. Yeah. taken, already blown up, so I'll have to do this without my globe. Today is coming from a conversation I had with our youth as we started, especially our eighth graders, as they started their process of writing faith statements. It's a privilege for me this year to be able to spend time with them. We've been meeting every couple of weeks as they work on that is succinct, which is hard, 100 words or less, we've said, statement of what their faith is right now with a verse that connects them to their faith. And as we started talking, I heard this concern for what does it mean to be a person who is faithful and cares about the bigger questions like the earth. And living in a time as young people when it can feel hopeless, possibly, as you read headlines and listen to all of the stuff that is being said, I can't even imagine what it is to be a young person thinking about growing up and being here in 50 years or so. It's a challenge. So I've been very, very grateful to our students, our middle school and high school students who have shared their thoughts that you heard in the middle of the song. But also they shared their hope. I asked them, what would you like me to share with our congregation? And they said, small things matter. And that fits so beautifully with our lesson from 1 John today. Because we are reading this epistle, this letter from an elder to the Johannine community that was struggling with knowing how to love each other even when in disagreement about some big things. That community was struggling whether, with whether Jesus was truly the Word made flesh. In other words, could God have really been a human being? And this community was splitting apart. There was a huge schism that was happening. And this elder wrote this letter to the community talking about love. It's a beautiful love letter to a community. The whole, not very long book. I invite you to read it. This week's reading 
which I love. It's 1 John 3, 16. Not John 3, 16. 1 John 3, 16 through 24. Talks about love in truth and action. And says that when you feel God's love, when you accept that Jesus Christ is your Savior and real, really God and human being, then there is an immediate and needed response of action. This elder says, you can't just say you believe in Jesus Christ. You have to do things to show that. And we live in a time right now when it feels like all we're doing is arguing about who's right and who's wrong, and we're not doing anything. I don't know, does that, am I misreading the world, or do you have that sense too? Does it feel like that? That we're just arguing about from these principles of I must be right. No, and you're wrong, of course. That's, if I'm right, you must be wrong. Thanks be to God that we have these letters, we have these beautiful stories from the time of the early church when people were trying to work out what they believed so that we have these stories these letters to help us reflect in our time the author this elder says to us while you believe in jesus christ You act from the love that you experience, that love of God. And when in your heart you are doubting that you're doing enough, that God knows your heart better than you do. So instead of beating yourself up that you're not doing enough, Trust that God knows that you are trying. So as these brilliant young people said to me, it's do the small things. It's recycle the plastic. Reuse the paper. Wash the coffee cups here instead of using styrofoam at St. Martin's. Each time we do something small, we are part of the bigger picture. Because it can feel so hopeless as we read all the news. And as they reminded me, yeah, each small thing makes a difference. I encourage you to listen to these young people. They are very smart. And they have lots of thoughts and lots of things to say. We often say, well, you you can't know. You're only in junior high or middle school and high school. How can you possibly know what's really going on? But love in truth and action is to listen to them. To take home the bulletin and reread their comments that are on that page. To meditate on them. And then take a risk and talk to them. I think they might actually be willing to talk. I'm getting some funny looks over here. I'm not setting you up, I promise. (laughs) I have had a good time listening to you. I will say that. As we listen 
Listen to those who are deeply impacted by our decisions. We can learn. The elder who wrote that letter, 1 John, was so concerned about the young Christians, the young believers who were coming to faith in Jesus Christ and being confronted by a community that was yelling at each other. And in his letter, he was saying, what are we presenting to young Christians about what it is to believe in Jesus Christ? He said, we preach love. We need to do love. That is love in truth and action. Small things go a long way. Listen to your heart. Know that God is with you and with our young people. And make those decisions, those little things, to make a difference for our world. Amen. Let us name, claim, and proclaim our Creator God, our Redeemer God, and our Sustainer God who leads us to make, to take love in action. So together we do it, words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Jesus is risen, and love has triumphed, triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all of those in need of good news. Shepherding God, gather your church wherever we wander from you and one another. Empower our church and ministries around the world to worship and serve alongside global companions as equal partners and co-workers in the gospel. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, preserve the health of biomes and ecosystems. Inspire scientists, researchers, conservation organizations, and all people entrusted with the task of caring for creation, that we may, better, that we, we may be better stewards of the world around us. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, lead nations and communities to love and truth and action by sharing resources, cooperating to end wars and conflicts, and listening to the wisdom of indigenous peoples around the globe. Help all those with power to share it and to use it for such power for good. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, protect the very young and the very old, those living without housing, victims of domestic abuse, and all those who live with chronic illnesses or com compromised immune systems. Guide communities to actively care for people who are vulnerable. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, help this and all communities of faith to listen for your voice. Call us away from things that distract us from following you. Invite us to more deeply love and serve the people who are lonely, isolated, and on the margins. God of grace, hear our prayer. Redeeming God, we pray for the family and friends of Anna, Berg Anna Bergstrom and for the co our community as we mourn her unexpected passing. Thank you for giving her to us for 54 years and for receiving her as your baptized child. Be with all of us who know and love her and miss her. God of grace, hear our prayer. Living God, we give thanks for our ancestors in faith, for their wisdom and guidance. Strengthen us to share the good news in our own day. God of grace, hear our prayer. Today, we pray especially for Joe, for Nauman, for Rob, for Catherine, and for Kelly. God, we ask your loving presence to be with them as they deal with illness and other issues. Bless them and companion them. God of grace, hear Your our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please greet each other with a sign of Christ's peace. Good job. I invite you now to take your seat as we continue with our service, remembering that you can always offer a sign of Christ's peace with one another after the service. We're very glad that you are joining us here in, on person, in person and online to celebrate and share with our youth this Earth Sunday. Thank you for continuing to support St. Martin's we are running a little behind financially at this point in the year, so I ask you to consider prayerfully your support of the work that we are doing here. 
And more than anything, I give you great thanks that you continue to support our work. Let us pray together. Good Shepherd, you spread a table before us. We offer you the gifts of this money, bread, and wine, signs of your gracious love. 
and tokens of our grateful hearts. Nourish us at the Feast of the Lamb, that we may proclaim to all the world your triumphant love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. power ruler of the universe you are worthy of glory and praise glory to you forever and ever at your command all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space galaxies suns the planets in their courses and this fragile earth our island home by your will they were created and have their being from the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through the prophets and sages, you revealed your, lawful, your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly choir, chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with all those in every generation who have looked to you with, in hope, to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. guess I messed that one up. <laughs> and so, Father, we have redeemed by him and made a new people by the, by the water and the spirit, now before you, and, and now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again he gave thanks, and he gave it to each of them, saying, Take and drink. This is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in your name. 
risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Together, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God to strengthen us, to act for the future, to love each other, to know hope when we feel hopeless. God invites you to this table. Please come. This is our moment, musically. <laughs> uh, will you sing this with us, please? Just you and 
end as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and give you peace today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. We thank you, O oh God, that you have strengthened our hearts through this feast of life and salvation. Shine the light of Christ on our path, that we may do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we have a few short announcements. I hope that you will join with me in giving our youth a grateful round of applause for all that they have done. I hope you will join us on Pentecost Sunday, May 19th, when eight of our youth will be confirmed, and you will have an opportunity to hear them as they share their faith statements with you as we're recording them so they'll be on video and you can even you'll be able to watch them but please join us then on the 19th of may we have a, a stephen ministry announcement good morning i'm virginia haas one of your stephen ministers and every month, Stephen Ministry has a continuing education on a topic related to one of the many crises our congregation may be facing. This month, the topic will be on planning and understanding the last chapter of life, including the difference between hospice and palliative care, how to discuss your wishes with loved ones and medical providers, and how to identify your preferences. Mary Beth Lee, a registered nurse with the Gift Project Initiative of Hospice Austin and the St. David's Foundation will present the information. Stephen Ministers would like you to join us for this very important topic. This Tuesday, April 23rd, from seven to eight, in the parlor. There are flyers at the Welcome Center if you would like additional information. Prior to the presentation, the Stephen Minister, Ministers will be touring Christopher's house, and we can include about six additional members um, to, from the congregation if anyone would like to join us. If you're interested, contact me for information on time and carpooling, and I'll be at the Welcome Desk after the service. We look forward to seeing you for either or both of these pro presentations. Thank you. And thank you to Stephen Ministers for all that you do to care for our congregation and our community. Fred, do you have, would you like to come up and make an announcement or do you just want me to? Okay. So following, immediately following this service, we will begin a special congregational meeting that is called to elect a new president-elect. Uh, we have one nominee and we'll take other nominees from the floor. That is the one piece of business that we have. So please register at the back and receive a voting card. We hope we will do this by acclamation, but if we need to vote, we will, you'll have your voting card. Anybody who is a, a confirmed and a voting, a voting member is defined as someone who is confirmed, contributes, and attends by receiving communion. That person is a voting member, so your name should be on the list. So please stay for that. And I think that is all of our announcements. Please take home the insert. Today especially, take home the bulletin and reflect this week, as I said, on the words of our youth as we really think about what it is to be caregivers for God's creation. So I think that is everything, so please stand as you are able to receive the blessing. 
God blesses us, strengthens us, so that we can go out and serve God's people and God's creation. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Go in peace, rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God, alleluia.